All right, everybody, we are talking watercolor today, and there is such a broad statement, in my opinion, when you talk about watercolor, but it is just as it says it is. So there's two things we're trying to do here. Either you're trying to emulate a watercolor look, meaning, you know, it's really splattery, or you just want to have water in the color so it's more transparent in certain areas. The piece we're working on today is a little mixture of both. It's a good entry level into getting into watercolors. Now, before I get too far into explaining exactly what's going on right now, I do want to say that this process, the techniques and everything involved in this is very similar to a black and gray shading. So if you're doing light sort of shading, that whole operation with the different tones watered down, this is kind of the same process. You're going to be using the same techniques, the same strokes, the same all that jazz when putting in the watercolor. So let's talk a little bit about what we're doing right here. I have a 23 curved mag, I believe it is. And what I'm doing is I have my colors laid out. I know you can't see them here, but they're laid out on my table just like they normally would. I have the pinks, all the colors I'm gonna be using, some light versions of those colors, and a whole bunch of different water cups. So what I've done here is I've dipped into that pink that I want, and then I went over into the water and I dipped probably like, you know, five or six times. I got a lot of water loaded up in there. Then I approached the area, the areas where I want it to be very transparent and light, where I want the, um, we'll call it since it's watercolor, we're emulating what, maybe some paint getting thrown on the canvas. So I'm kind of emulating the lightest portions of the, the painting, if you will, where there's way more water and it's very transparent. And I'm putting that in just like I would a really light um, gray wash. So it's a pendulant motion. You put it in, you wipe, you see how it's looking. Well, I want it to be more transparent. So you dip into some more water. And one of the hardest things I think when trying to do this process for me anyhow, was trying to be free with it because you have to put color outside the lines. You have to do things that you wouldn't normally feel comfortable doing. I'm a very structured kind of individual for the most part when it comes to what I do. So for me to not put it wall to wall color or do exactly, you know, what you're used to doing was tricky. It did take me a little bit to loosen up here in, in this process and get comfortable with uh, putting color outside lines, making it look kind of a crazy, sort of messy, but controlled thing here. So nonetheless, I'm gonna go around the outside of this piece, well, like you just see right here, and do that same thing. I kind of just put that base in there, that lightest shine of shade, that lightest tone, a lot of water in there. And then I'm going back with a darker pink, maybe a little bit of red, a touch of purple. I'm kind of just jumping in between these caps, right? I know the kind of the tone I'm looking for. And depending on how transparent I want it, will depend on how much water I have in there. Here I have far less water than I did before. Maybe a splash or two, just enough, but not the five or six splashes of water in there I had before. And so now you're just gonna go back and again, treat it like a black and gray piece or what have you and put darker tones in, darker colors, if you will. I've mixed a little bit more red with this to get more of an impact here. And still, in the end, it will be subtle. And that's kind of what we're looking for. We have that feeling of, sort of a brush or just hitting this flower very quickly and almost haphazardly with just like a little bit of water in there and some of the water fades out and the bits of pigment are left behind sort of where the brush hit. And I hope some of this makes sense, guys. I am not a painter, um, but I, I do enjoy trying to do different things with tattooing and uh, what have you. So that is pretty much what we're gonna be doing here. I'm gonna go around this, just adding a little bit of that depth here and there. And here I've gone with even another tone. So now I have a bit more of a purple in there and I'm just kind of pushing that around as well. Just trying to get a little bit more um, depth to it, a little bit more colors happening in this piece right here. And again, once I put that base amount of water down, everything after that is a bit less. So less water um, and 
when I'm really trying to get the darkest parts where I really want it to be a lot more concentrated color, I won't put any water in there. And uh, yeah, I think that's what we're doing pretty much right here. So there we have it. We pretty much have all the colors we want in there. Now I'm going to come back and start putting some black in there, some dots in the center. And <clears throat> just so you guys are aware, in this piece, I'm actually using the Bishop Juan shader and not the packer because, again, when it comes to the technique of this, I prefer to have the shader there. It has a softer hit. I'm comfortable putting light tones in with the shader. So why not use the same tool when putting light tones of, uh, of color in? And here we go again, adding just that little extra bit of depth with a little bit of black. Obviously, this has nothing to do with watercolor, but that's what I'm doing. So here we're going to repeat the process again. I have this lavender sort of color that I have heavily watered down to get me the real light transparent base tone. And that's what I'm saying. We go through, I, at least that's the technique I've developed here, is that I found it best to really just put the lightest bits down, the super transparent portions down, and then go back and kind of shape them a little bit. Put the spot where maybe the drop of paint fell, so it's the heaviest, densest color, and then this is the part where it kind of fades out with the water. Now there are a few ways to do this. You can use the same tone if you want, the same exact color, and just add less water. But I feel like that's good some spots, but it doesn't give you, in my opinion, a full look. It doesn't give you the full depth and range. So as you'll see here later, again, I use a bit of a darker purple, or I will mix my colors to get me the darker purple that I want. And this is also a layer game. <clears throat> again, I'm using a very light lavender with a lot of water. And the, the tricky part is, is letting myself go outside the lines, letting this piece be loose and and what have you, not so constructed. And I truly found it to be so much fun. It was probably one of the most fun experiences because once you got the hang of it, there wasn't really any pressure. You're just enjoying it. You're looking at your reference. Obviously, it's good to have a reference so you know where you're putting these colors, even though it looks like it's out of control and it's free you're still kind of following a reference doing what you see but enjoying it um, along the way so again here i've gone up to a little bit darker of a purple still a little bit of water in here i know it's probably hard to see but this ink is watered down a little bit now that's going to be up to you the best thing to do is pick that color put a lot of water in there heavy amount of water hit the skin the more water, the lighter it's gonna come out. So if it's coming out too light, you can always back off on the water. But if you go too dark, you can't exactly take it back out. You understand what I mean? I think you do. So nonetheless, that's essentially what's happening here. And I do this about three to four different times. Base tone, next layer, next layer, and then like a dark layer. But it's quick. I'm not beating the skin up. I'm using that shader so it has a softer hit on it. And uh, again, once those pores are opened up, it doesn't take nearly as much effort to get that ink in there. And again, we're just creating those spots. Uh, so I like to think in this purple section, you kind of just like dabbed these spots with a paintbrush. So one spot's holding the majority of the pigment or paint, and then the rest is kind of spilled out a little bit. Now, there are many different ways to do watercolor. You can do it without any water at all. And you can just do it with different shades and whatnot and shapes or what have you because some people don't want that transparent look. They want to feel like there's splashes of color all over and it's falling all over, but they kind of want it to be super dense and visible. So that's when you just mess with your colors in general. So if you're doing a blue and you lay the blue down and then maybe you want it to be kind of dark around the edge because that's where the water and that's where the ink is settling or what have you then you put a darker tone out there but in this case this is more so water based and it's more fun when they're water based in my opinion but i encourage you guys to get a feel for this try it out if you have experience doing black and gray and you have experience doing color it should feel somewhat somewhat second nature especially in a technique form so again, here guys, this is that darkest purple. 
just kind of putting that in key spots so giving it a little bit more depth of feel and guys we just carry on that same process watered down pinks or in this case a watered down pink and then i may add less and less water to get more of a darker area then you want to switch to maybe a darker pink and put some like little spots or whatever whatever kind of effect you're trying to get it's pretty much the color you're using see here we go we got a darker pink in there just to kind of give that sort of hit of color look in different areas maybe a drop fell here and a drop fell there here drop there drop everywhere drop drop okay anyhow so that's that here's an example of well the tone with water is just so light it wouldn't work out so i just used the exact tone this is some sort of a seafoam green that was just not very dark so i added no water and just went ahead and put that color in then used other colors that were around that same tone if you will or what have you and kind of threw that in as the darker parts and whatnot again this isn't just another thing that you can do it's up to you use water use your imagination whatever it is and again same here yellow you can add a little bit of orange if you want to just whatever you got to do to get a little bit of depth here and um a lot of this information that i got i had a short conversation with my buddy andy out in the uk and he's dabbled in some watercolor stuff and he pretty much is telling me what i'm explaining in better detail to you guys um and it really comes down to use a lot of water get a feel for how things work be free enjoy the process and try to have fun so here guys this tattoo continues to go on and we're just going around adding pops of color all over the place there's more tattoo below this and that's it that's it you just need to find a way to let your mind go and be free while still i guess kind of reeling yourself in and just like in any other tattoo absolutely go back in add some white here and there will absolutely make things pop it uh just like it would in any other piece a little bit of white goes a long way if uh if you're smart about it so again you can see here guys just kind of splashes of color here and there and um in a controlled non-controlled <laughs> manner and it can be a lot of fun guys if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe if you haven't already check out the facebook and instagram you can see this uh tattoo and many others truly appreciate your support guys i hope this video helped you out until next time peace